welcome back. I'm one of your co-hosts, Rico Borrego. I'm your other co-host, Tony Borrego. And this is the podcast known as Relatively Sound, the podcast where life is unfair. Today, Tony and I, after taking a little, little break, we are back with an episode where we are focusing in on TV show theme songs. Which, you know, a little bit outside our comfort zone. You know, we're we're mixing mediums now, you know, different ways to view art. Um, but you know, Tony and I are both we're both big TV people. Yeah. Um at least I I I think you know, Lindsay has definitely made me more of a, a movie person over the you know the years, but I think growing up I was way more into TV shows than movies. And, you know, the very first thing you see on a TV show usually is the theme song. You know, nowadays uh, there's a lot of like, you know, there's like a scene before you get to the the TV theme song and the the opening credits, but or or the skip intro button. Yeah, basically on streaming now, yeah, you just skip it. But you know, back in the day when you had to watch TV live or reruns, even a lot of the time there's a theme song, and you know it's kind of an important aspect to a show. And there's some where the songs were written specifically for the show. There's some where maybe it was a song that existed beforehand that just fit the show perfectly. Some are instrumental. Some have, you know, lyrics specifically explaining the TV show. Um, So Tony and I are going to go over some today. We're going to, you know, pick some of our favorites and then maybe do some honorable mentions at the end. Um, So, yeah, I mean, let's 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 get right into it. Um, So was, was there a particular theme song that sprouted this idea for the episode for you where you were like listening to it or watching the show and you're like i want to talk about that yeah well that that's a good question um i recently restarted um i started re-watching uh psych the show on the usa network is that what it's called U- usa yeah usa, USA network. network yeah um and i started watching it from the beginning uh, it used to be like my favorite show ever and I think there might be a couple of shows that have surpassed that over the years, but I think it's a very solid show. Like every show, it has a couple of seasons that just did not need to be. But um, yeah, and I remember when I started watching like the very first, the pilot episode, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot like how hard this theme song goes. Um, so I, we can actually start right there because that was actually one of the ones I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, the psych, psych, premiered in 2006 and the theme song well the show i guess really quickly because there's some of these shows we'll talk about where we don't even really need to talk about the show but it's basically about a guy who pretends to be psychic and he helps out the um, his local police department in solving crimes and that's why the show's called psych and the theme song is called i know you know uh, written and performed by a band called the Friendly Indians. I know, you know, that I'm not telling the truth. I know, you know, they just don't have any proof. Risk of deception, learn how to bend. Your worst in the business, then will psych you out in the end. And the lead singer is the show creator of Psych, um, Steve Frank. And he wrote the theme song and performed it with his band. And it's just a night, you know, in fact, I don't even think a full version of the song exists. Like they, he's played, they played it live before where they've added on additional verses, but you can really only like find the version on YouTube where it's like just, you know, the two verses and the chorus a couple of times. I think it's, it's just a fun little kind of like pop rock song. Uh, The lyrics kind of fit the show, you know, but you could also listen to the song outside of the show and not know that it was written for a TV show. Um, I like this theme song because they would have themed episodes where they would change the song to fit the theme of the episode. So Christmas episode, they'd have versions of the song with sleigh bells in the background. Um, Bollywood episode, they had the song like a Bollywood version of it, of the song. Different instrumentation, um, there was a Spanish uh, themed episode where the song was sung in Spanish. Uh, and then was it the same singer that I don't think so. I I do not. I could be wrong because I, I haven't gotten I have not gotten into that show yet in my rewatching. 
okay. I, just, I just remember it. Um, but yeah, so I, I like that it, it, it ch- would change from time and time again. Um, yeah, so I, I, maybe not my favorite theme song of all time, but I, I just it's super catchy and it gets stuck in my head and it fits the show perfectly. I, I, I do want to kind of piggyback off that point there. But real quick, I got to share some some lore here. So Rico, growing up, he had a um, a little pillow, like yay big, that was a pineapple that said Psychonic. You know, and pineapple is a reoccurring theme in Psych. There's one in every episode. Um, and I have a coworker, and she also loves Psych. Like, that's one of her very favorite shows, especially, like, when growing up and whatnot. Um, so I had gifted it to her because Rico said he didn't want it. And just this morning, she told me, hey, I re-gifted that gift to my little cousin. And she was in tears because she was so excited to get this pillow. Wow. So it's crazy how, you know, between shows and, you know, I guess music in this turn, you know, people can connect. Yeah. But- I mean, it's a great show. And I, I think more people should know about it. You know, it's it's a fun. I, I didn't maybe mention it before. It's a comedy show. Uh, but. Yeah, I I bought that pillow like when I like I think when like I really got into the show, I bought a sweatshirt and the pillow, and then like some of the DV- some of the seasons on DVD. Okay, I forgot you had the um the sweatshirt. What what color was it? Gray with uh, like a green pineapple on it. That's right. Okay, and it's right. like psych in the middle. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So you're talking like the progression of a theme, so you know, a theme song they're doing mm-hmm. like um holiday versions and whatnot. But that made me think about um south park the you know, primus one of my oh, favorite yeah. bands Surprised does the theme song we didn't even talk about this before and yeah i forgot about that yeah and he also does uh les claypool does the robot chicken theme but with south park uh, i don't know what season exactly but later on they actually switched it to a version where they do les claypool's whamola song which that is a whole separate story um i think he would do it with his one of his like flying frog brigade side project band or something and it's basically like a giant string on a giant stick and he just hits it with another stick i don't need to go into that right now but you know it's like a goofy band for a goofy show um and it's cool to you know shows get stale you know if you're watching the same theme all the time so it's cool to freshen it up and a lot of the times too like from season to season if a lot most not most but like with comedy shows or family sitcoms there'd be clips from episodes from like that season or past seasons and a lot of time like after a couple seasons um when a new season would start they would change the clips they use in the show that way like if you know if it's a if it's a show about a family and you're on season eight they're showing clips of like the family like how they've aged you know they're not still showing clips from season one where they're all like you know, younger and stuff. So, right, right. But the song usually doesn't change, you know. So it's. I think it is kind of more rare for a song to change from season to season or episode to episode. You know. Yeah, uh, agreed. Um, why don't you talk about um one of I don't know if you would say it's one of your favorite shows, but it's a show that you've watched way more than me. Um, an animated show, uh, Futurama. It is one of my favorite shows. Um, Futurama is a cool one. <laughs> Um, so unlike the other song theme songs I wanted to bring up, um, this one is made primarily from sampling to my knowledge. Uh, it actually samples from the song psych rock from Pierre Henry, which I think it was from like 1967. And they also sample let's see rappers delight from sugar gang, sugar, sorry, sugar hill gang and amen brother from the Winston's like the drum sample. Um, and yeah, and you get this song that has kind of like, I don't know, like the bass track of Psych Rock is, sounds kind of like a, almost like a psychedelic 60s thing, kind of like a sense of wonder in there. And then with like the synthetic sampling, you know, with how it's like slowed down and whatnot, it makes it sound more modern. So I don't know, you get this kind of weird blend of styles and it kind of gives the show a futuristic theme. I mean, especially once you slap in some like sound effects, you know, the the spaceship crashing into the sign and the intro. Once you put that all together, it it fits really well. And it's a simple melody. You can hum instrumental, but 
I don't know. It it just fits the song well, and I, I associate it. And it's been a while since I've seen the show. Um, when the the main character he goes into the future, right? Yes, Fry. Uh, what time period was he living in? Was it current day? Because the show came. I think the show came out in nineteen ninety nine. Yes, yes. So he was living, uh, so like on New Year's Eve, like right before, he accidentally gets frozen for a thousand years. Uh, okay. So he wakes up in year 3000. Okay, yeah. So it's so, pretty, pretty far in the future. Pre- pretty far, I guess. Pretty far. Uh, and I, it was interesting learning that the, the guy who like composed this theme song, Christopher Ting, might be mispronouncing that last name, he like, he considered himself like a drummer first and like he was like in a band and like, because he didn't like to lug around the drums, he'd have his bandmates like meet him at his house and they would leave their instruments there usually. And then he started like learning other instruments just because they were at his house, like keyboards and guitars and stuff. So it kind of makes sense knowing that, that like the song is like made up of like sampling and different parts and, and whatnot, you know, as opposed to right, right. him coming up with every melody on his own or every drum part or bass part, you know, or hell even lyrics. Cause there is none. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's, that I do think that's important in a theme song. Like the psych one has lyrics that do fit the show's theme, but again, it, it's not like they name, you know, call out character names or anything like that. They're, they're pretty, I mean, you could apply them to probably some I, other things. Exactly. But... Yeah. And then the future drama has no lyrics, but like a song where like it almost feel like it was written for, you know, the show. And it's one of my favorite um, theme songs is the opening theme song to Cheers. Never um, seen it. Yeah. A sitcom that came out in uh, 1982. And it's, you know, it's a sitcom. I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, Granted, I haven't seen it since I originally saw it like over 10 years ago. So it's not one I watch like regularly at all. But it's like it's a really good one to put on the background. Like I remember like doing homework and like kind of watching in the background and stuff like that. You know, it's just like a very it's about everyone at the bar. And, you know, it's just a comedy where they're like making jokes. And um, but like the the theme song um, was written and performed by Gary Portnoy. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And like he originally was, there was this lady, Judy Hart angelo um and she wanted him to like write a song for a musical that was going to be called preppies and like she hadn't got part of the song so like he she gave it to him and like he worked on it and then like someone at like i don't know, I think it was cbs whoever wherever cheers ended up um whatever you know station picked up cheers he like heard the song was like i think this will fit perfectly for cheers um and it really does because like it, it's a piano. It's kind of a piano ballad. It, Tony said earlier, it kind of reminds him of like Billy Joel a little bit. It, it kind of does. I think it reminds me a little bit of Harry Nielsen. Like if you took him and Billy Joel and they made a song together. Uh, but it like, starts off with like a piano ballad and he's singing like making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Um, taking a break from your wor- worries sure would help a lot. And then there's the bit where they're like, wouldn't you like to get away? And then the song starts to build and, he, they sing, you know, go to a place where everybody knows your name. And that's like, you know, makes perfect sense for the show where it's about regulars at a bar. You know, it's about them going to the same place every day and to a place where they don't have to worry about the world, you know, because when they're in this bar every night, they're just, you know, having fun. So, you know, it's a song where like the lyrics are like so like, again, maybe not specific in the sense where it's like they're you know, they're not explaining the characters in the song, but like it, it fits the song like perfectly. Like, I don't think you could, you know, really have another song to fit cheers any better. Um, and I just like the song. I like that's just like I said, maybe because I like people like Billy Joel and Harry Nilsson, but it gives me kind of that like late 70s kind of vibe, like singer songwriter vibe. And 
I enjoy the song on its own, and I think it works perfect for Cheers. Yeah, no, that that's solid. Um, and then, of course, that's you know, Cheers spun off the the other show, Frasier. That was the spinoff show, and that show has like a completely different type of theme song. Um, it's the you know Kelsey Grammer, the guy who plays Frasier. He sings that song. Uh, it's the one where he's singing about tossed salad and scrambled eggs. You may have seen the show. Yeah, it's it's a jazz number. It's jazz. Oh, okay. okay. Because and because Fraser, like his character is like he's smart and like sophisticated, and he, the music choices of, that he would listen to is like jazz, a classical music. So they made the the number like jazzy. He, he's Schoolium, is what you're saying. Basically, yeah, yeah, he is. Right. And speaking of Schooliums, uh, one of the ones I wanted to talk about today was the SpongeBob SquarePants theme. Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you. I Captain. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. And yellow and porous is he. Now, I actually think a lot of like cartoon kid show themes are really good, just because they're either catchy, they're imaginative, or whatnot. Um, I really love SpongeBob growing up. Those early seasons are killer. Um. But I actually came across a video recently that actually contains all like the individual tracks from the SpongeBob theme. And there was a lot going on there that I didn't realize. And I thought it was pretty cool. Um, there's an accordion, a mandolin, a penny whistle. Um, those are all in that. And I didn't realize that um, alongside, of course, like drums, guitar, and bass. Um, but yeah, I mean, lyrically, it's written for... For SpongeBob, you could not put this for any other show because it says yeah. the title of it over and over. Um, it explains the character as SpongeBob, you know. I mean, it, 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 I mean, like his physical... who lives in a pineapple yeah. under the sea, absorbent and yellow and porous is he? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about shows that just kind of shout the, the title over and over again, but it's just so fun and infectious. Like, I would not consider this one of my favorite theme songs. But every time you watch it, you're ready to watch an episode of SpongeBob after. Like, I feel properly hyped up. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's got the call and the response between Painty the pirate, who is the painting, uh, who is actually the the lips. They're the creator of the show, Steven Hillenberg. His lips are yeah. put underneath the picture of Painty the pirate, uh, and he actually did help write. You know, he wrote the song, co-wrote it with um, some other people. And, yeah, I mean, you guys all know SpongeBob. I don't have to tell you what SpongeBob's all about. And I, I like the theme song, too, because, like, it's it's um it was based off, like, a specific uh, sea shanty. That was right. That was right. Blow the man down. And, like, obviously it fits the underwater nautical themes of the show. Uh, but like I, I the overall soundtrack to SpongeBob too, like um, the outro theme song. Um, I think was, it's better. Yeah, and it was it was played and created by uh, Steve Belfer, who I think was friends with with Steven. And um, at the time, Steven wanted like their own music because he thought it was important for the show to have like its own identity through original music, because a lot of the other music like used in between scenes. Um, like some of those more kind of corny Hawaiian kind of theme songs, those are taken from the Associated Production Music Library, which, and I, to my understanding, it's like non copyrighted music that anyone like, can use. like free use or whatever they call it, yeah. fair use. So, and I know, like down the road, like SpongeBob, they, you know, they did more original songs, like I Rip My Pants, right? So good. But then they also had like, um, um. Um, what's his name? Not Tiny Tim. Is it Tiny Tim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. used tiny, tiny Tim in like, like the, the first, first episode. episode. Yeah, the pilot. Live in the sunlight. You have the um, the future episode too with that song. Oh, well, that's actually from the. Are you talking about when worlds collide? Yeah, that is actually from the. Um, that's like a special actually where they have oh, the okay. the caveman in the robot. They're, they do like this dance number and it's like this it's kind of scary it's like as a kid guys dressed up as a yeah. caveman there's a life-size robot yeah I, I do think that was a good way to put it uh, at a musical identity to the show because yeah. it all fits it in I mean 
I feel bad just saying it's Hawaiian music because I don't know anything about actual Hawaiian music. So. Oh yeah, I know. I, I wasn't trying. To I put hope down it's Hawaiian a fair music. portrayal yeah. of um of it. Well, I think they picked songs that were like stereotypically Hawaiian sounding, as opposed to maybe what. Yeah. Right. Right. And, but, you know, that's another good example, though, of um, a theme song where, like, the sound effects really help make it convincing because yeah. you hear, like, birds and you hear water, you know. Seagulls and, yeah. Yeah. Bubbles. Uh, well, speaking of bubbles, we cannot forget one of my favorite songs in the show, um, Jellyfish Jam. Jellyfish Jam. Is that the boom, 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 yeah. boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom? Yeah, that, that one goes hard. Yeah. And everyone's gonna say the campfire song, but a I think little that too one, gimmicky. Or even the friendship song. That one's better, I think. F is for friends to do things yeah. together. U is for yeah. you and me. Yeah, that one's good, especially when Plankton comes in with his verse. <laughs> Maybe my favorite. We could we should have made. We, I think we should have said this for a whole SpongeBob episode because I also really like the um, the one where um, SpongeBob has to work for Plankton, and yes. him, him and uh, Mr. Krabs do a duet. Yes, they they parody "A House Is Not a Home" from Burt Bacharach. Oh, I see. I didn't know that was a parody. I thought that was an original song. No, I I specifically remember when I was getting into like Dion Warwick's you know work and hearing I was like, "A house is not a home," and I'm like, "Why? Why does this sound like it would be familiar?" Right. And then I heard the song, and I'm like, "No way!" Like there you go. No way. SpongeBob was just doing a '60s song reference like that. Now sticking to the animated. Um, TV shows here. Um, I do want to give a shout out to a show that I, I thought maybe you liked more than me, but maybe we like it equally. I haven't seen it in forever, but um, that would be King of the Hill. Came out in 1997, I think on Fox. And I think it's like when it comes to adult animated shows, I think it's by far the best. I think it's better than The Simpsons, Family Guy, Bob's Burgers. Like, I, I probably agree with you. Like, SpongeBob is probably the best animated like kids show. But I think for like adults, King of the Hill is the best because I think I can only watch so much of a show like Simpsons or Family Guy because it's so fast paced. King of the Hill is like, slow it's it's almost like it's not animated the pace that it runs through um good observation and i think that's you know the jokes i think just land better and you have to be a little bit more patient watching it than like a family guy where there's not like a joke every you know second and um that show starts off with a instrumental song that is actually named yahoos and triangles written by an arizona band called the refreshments and it's just this really fun like guitar riff that has a little bit of that kind of redneck quality that like you get through some of the characters in King of the Hill. And it does kind of have that more kind of southern twang a little bit to it. What what do you mean you kind of get? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, a family in Texas. It is, I know. But like I like, you know, a character like like Dale, like to me is more of like is more redneck than like um than right. you know the other characters, but um, I can't think of his name. <laughs> then Boomhauer? Boomhauer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, but it's just a really fun instrumental. There's a lot of triangle in the song, which is why I think it's called Yahoos and Triangles. I, I don't uh, think I heard of one Yahoo at the end, but... No, but it, it just has that really fast, upbeat pace to it, and it's a, it's a short song, and but it just fits. Again, no lyric, so it doesn't but the sound of it, the genre of it really fits the show. Um, so and I didn't want to throw that one out there. You mentioning that it's like slower paced and stuff. I'm trying to like, I'm imagining the theme song in my head. I, I feel like usually it's like, you know, the theme song's really energetic. It's short, it's snappy. Yeah. Right. And then there usually is like that gap of silence where the scene is setting in. And, you know, I don't know. There's kind of a contrast between the, the music and the show, but it, it works so well somehow. Yeah, I agree. Um, now, Going down the instrumental route, um, I think we would be doing a dishonor if we didn't at least mention uh, Breaking Bad. But you, I think, prefer the theme song to the spinoff show from Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. Is that correct? 
Yes, I prefer the Breaking Bad show, I but agree. the Better Call Saul theme is miles better than the Breaking Bad theme. I don't like the Breaking Bad theme. I get it. I it's it's show, moody. Though. It's dark. It's kind of boring, though. I mean, it's short. But that's the thing, like, because there, I think there is a longer version. But like, when you, it's just the short one for like the really quick intro, I think it's perfect. But I, I yeah, it, it just Excuse doesn't me, do as, anything for me as a as like a song on its own. Yeah, I would never go out of my way to listen to it. Now, before you get into like the music aspect, um, it does kind of have an interesting background. The Better Call Saul show, uh, the theme song, um, and it doesn't actually have a title. I think it's just called like theme song, Better Call Saul theme song. Uh, was written by an English rock band called Little Barry. And the drummer of that band, Virgil Howell, he's the son of the guitarist Steve. from Yes. Hmm? So, I'm sorry, I cut you off there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 I thought you were correcting me. Yeah, he's he's the son of the guitarist from Yes, Steve Howe. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. Um. Now he unfortunately uh, his son passed away in 2017, but um, this Better Call Saul aired uh, first aired in 2015, um, and so yeah, so I I just thought that was an interesting connection that like, you know, I would never have like if someone said there's a way to connect the band Yes to Better Call Saul, I would have been like I have no idea how. Right, that is kind of seems a little far also out. Also, pun intended. How? God damn it! Uh, so, so why do you what do you like about the song itself? Well, what I like about it is that, well, first off, when I first heard the theme, I, I, I thought two things to myself. The first thing I thought, which I think most people probably would have thought, was like, oh, this show's going to be sick. And then the second thing I thought was, okay, I'm going to learn that on guitar because that's sick. It's slide, right? I don't think so. No, I don't think it's slide. There's no slide in it? Uh, I mean, he's, I think am I, I'm thinking, of, bad, I'm thinking of Breaking Bad, aren't I? Yes, yes, Breaking Bad. Yes, that has the slide. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's like this crunchy guitar tone, but it, you know, it sounds like kind of cool and badass, but it's like low key. And then, you know, it, it has that deserty sort of desert rock sound. Yeah. Um, I think of it as sounding kind of greasy, which you think of Saul and he is kind of a greasy lawyer. See, if you had told me like Josh Homme came up with it, I would have believed you. Right. Right. Exactly. Not that I'm necessarily calling Josh Homme greasy, but like. Like desert rock, which it's is what you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. You know, a little nice use of whammy bar on the track. Like, and I'll say I have listened to the rest of the song on like on YouTube or whatever. And I am not really interested into it. Like, it's not bad, but it's just, it sounds a lot different than the intro. But, you know, when an intro is so good that you're just like, yeah, this rocks, I'm going to use it for a show theme. Like, it, you know, it speaks for itself. Yeah, no, I think it fits it perfectly. Like it, it definitely to me conjures up the imagery of like desert. And there's a lot of desert scenes in Better Call Saul. Breaking Bad too, but Better Call Saul, there's a lot of them. More than you would expect almost. Uh, right, right. Like I think of the scene where he's walking by himself in the desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then finally like Mike comes to like rescue him. Um but yeah, like that's I think I think it's a good. I mean, I like the Breaking Bad one too, but I agree. I think the song itself for the Saul show is better. And, and just just to clarify, you you also like Breaking Bad more as a show, though, right? Yeah, no, I I think the writing on Saul is like miles better than like a lot of TV shows these days. Um, and the acting is phenomenal. I think I think the dialogue itself too is just like one of the best. But yeah, I think as a show, Breaking Bad just has more like whoa moments you know has more standout moments um and it's flashier there's more action there's more drama Saul's so very it's very what's the word like it's um it's not in your face with the drama but it has a lot of it um uh, especially as the seasons go on but yeah i i prefer breaking bad as a show for sure um now i wanted to do a couple um there's really like one more i really want to point out and we're going back to the 80s. We're doing, I, I wanted to give a shout out to what a, a lot of people probably consider a very corny theme song, but uh, the Full House theme song. Theme song. 
Great theme song. Everywhere You Look, originally written by Jesse Frederick. Um, and a couple Jesse other Jesse Kostopoulos? Well, I, I, funny enough, in the notes, I don't know if you read it, but I put, um, strangely enough, the Beach Boys nor John Stamos had anything to do with creating <laughs> this song. Um, because there's actually a lot of music in Flaus because, you know, John Stamos' character, Jesse, he's like, you know, he loves music. He plays, you know, guitar and drums and he's got Jesse and the Rippers and. Yeah, then there's Viper, who's the guitarist who dates. Um... Well, Danny, right? He dates Danny? Not, not, no, wait, no, no. <laughs> DJ, no, he, DJ. Jesus. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't think Full House was progressive enough for that. Um, yeah. Um, what, they changed the band name too for that season. It was like Jesse and like the, it was a really, it was a really cringy name. Like um, something with monkeys. Jesse and, no. uh, yeah, hold on. I'm going to look it up. Full Jesse house. and the Viper Monkeys. Um, Jesse and the. I'm just gonna type in monkeys because I know monkeys is. In it's there. not gonna. I I don't think it was the monkeys in there. Oh, no, it's even worse. The band name. It wasn't even Jesse. It's called Hot Daddy and the Monkey Puppets. No, yeah. no. Okay, I have to look this up too. I don't believe you. Yeah, <laughs> daddy. And Cause, the... Yeah, because because you're right. He he formed because it's like the Jesse and the Rippers break up, so he forms like a new band that's supposed to be more '90s sounding. Because this was like the season where, in real life, it was already in the '90s. Okay, and he was looking for more like kind of rock, you know, grunge. But then like the song they played were like very like Phil Collins sounding songs, so it made no sense. But yeah, like Viper. The the lead guitarist, yeah, he ends up dating um, DJ. Um, but yeah, Danny's daughter, eldest yeah. daughter. Yeah, not not Danny. Um, but but going back to the the theme song of Full House, <laughs> um, it's very corny. It's very eighties. Um, it has like it starts off with like the 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 singers almost like talking the words rather than like singing them. But right. like you can, you can hear in your head right now, and it's like. It's very smooth, but then it, like it builds and builds eventually to where it gets to the part where it's like everywhere you look. At... I mean, it's very like it is like the antithesis of theme song for it for a sitcom. Um, and in fact, the guy who wrote the song, um, Jesse Frederick, he also wrote the theme song to Family Matters, Step by Step, and Perfect Strangers. So I only know Family Matters, but I, I cannot I cannot remember the theme song. I'll have to give it a listen after. I can't, I can't either, but I know the second I hear it, I, I would like recognize it. Um, yeah. And I will, I will say this. I, I like that. Like, or t for some reason, like, so, you know, like the Seinfeld theme, right? It's got like that kind of, that kind of white funk thing going. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Yes. And I feel the same way with the very beginning of the full house theme. It kind of has that, like that little bop, like the, oh yeah, yeah I'm cool. You know, for a suburban family. Yeah, it yeah like that. it's very fitting, but it's still fun and it's wholesome. And I think the lyrics are good too. Whatever happened to predictability? I mean, the mailman, you know, the paper boy, the late night TV, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, again, it, it, it works. It fits the show, but it doesn't explain what the show's about. But it, the lyrics are topical for the show. Yes. Um, well now said. you did bring up Seinfeld. I I did a uh, I had like a master list of shows that I was going to possibly bring up in this episode, and. I had Seinfeld slash Home Improvement because I consider them the same type of theme song where like you call it Seinfeld like white funk and like the Home Improvement um, theme song is like a very like 80s, like half the song is made up of like tool sounds and then just Tim Allen grunting the whole time. Right. Which let's be real. Let's be real. The, the You know, occasionally those grunts do haunt you in your sleep. Yeah. And you do those like... Rrr. Like, yeah, that's like literally how the song starts. I think. I think. Um, so I I did have those two together. And there's some here I just want to shout out. Um, some of the okay, like one of them is a very new show, Last of Us, based off the video game. Gorgeous music, really great music. Um, but it was music written for the game, so 
it's I mean it's original music, but like they just took it from the game basically. Um, Stranger Things music, eighty sounding like synths, you know, dark like synth arpeggios, and fits the show perfectly. Did you did you know that the character Steve has his own band? He does. He has that one very viral song right now. I mean, as of right now, oh, is it viral? That one where it's like, when I'm, I'm back loop. in Chicago. No, no, you probably heard it on TikTok. Probably that's his band. Yeah, that's the band you're talking about. Or one of, I think he had maybe a different band before. Now he goes under like another pseudonym. moniker. Yeah. Um, House, the theme song. The theme song for House is um a song by Massive Attack. Um, that, that's the band called... name, <laughs> Massive Attack. Yeah, you never heard what of type, what type of music do they do? Like that sounds like the most metal band name I've ever heard. No, they're not metal. They're um, they are considered trip hop. Trip hop. Okay. Well, that that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I think I just want to now pull it up to like make sure I'm getting the right song, because I did not research for this song. Um, is this? Hold on. Now I gotta just pull up. Uh, hold on. House. TV show. Oh, you're gonna get a yeah, it is. It is teardrop. Yeah, it's there's it's the massive attack song teardrop. Yeah, and that's a song where like it was a song beforehand, but it fits really well with the show. I, I'm a, I've only seen a little bit of house, but I've never uh, really seen it. Uh, I did want to shout out Malcolm in the Middle theme song yes. Boss of Me by um, They Might Be Giants, a song that they had previously you know recorded, and um, it's actually one of their bigger songs. It won them a Grammy. Uh, and that song just also like fits the show, you know. You're not the boss of me now, and you're not so big. Like, and then all all like the uh, like the TV footage, you know, clips they use like from the '90s. Like, it, like it just fits it so well. It is like such a, it's a perfect storm. Yeah, and who can believe we've already not talked about two shows where Brian Cranston has has starred in. Look at that. I mean, he did star in Better Call Saul, technically. Uh, uh... Flashbacks, yeah, as we call it. Yeah, he's not you know, I, I didn't, I didn't look, you know, research it at all. But I, I do want to point out the Scrubs theme song because it's so short. I, I thought about that one too. Yeah, I didn't look it up, but the like it's short, but it it's memorable. It's catchy. I'm not Superman, Doo-doo-doo. which is kind of funny that like that's like the line for a song where he's basically like kind of a goofball at a hospital. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. Um, our sister Tessa, she, she's really into Scrubs, but I've only seen like episodes here or there. I, I've seen some pretty funny clips from um not from YouTube even but just like from it being on TV in passing. I'm just seeing. I'm curious who wrote the song. Um, the song called Superman by someone named Laszlo Bain. Laszlo Bain. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he worked with um. He's worked with someone from Men at Work. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got some street cred. Random, but yeah. Yeah. You know, an- another kind of like show I kind of grouped together, maybe theme song wise, would be How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, what, see, what, we, one we, of like the most poorly aged shows ever. Yeah, a lot of those shows. Yeah, like but, yeah, some of the theme songs are better than others. Like yeah, like okay, we we were talking about that. We might as well talk about Big Bang Theory and and a band that Tony and I both actually dearly loved, the Bare Naked Ladies, contributed a, a theme song to I think one of the more annoying uh, sitcoms from the two thousands. Um. A song that they specifically wrote for the show, and it's like a show about like the creation of Earth, and like it's all about science because that's what the show's about. <laughs> I don't know if I would I'm say the Earth, show well, is about the creation of Earth. Well, it's about scientists. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, I, I, okay, maybe what I said was a little a bit of a reach, but <laughs> I'm I don't really care if I offend Big Bang Theory fans. Um, if they want to have a word with me, then fine, Bazinga, I don't care, but. Um, and just wait till we hit you with the young Sheldon theme. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know that. Theme. <laughs> I don't. Either. Um, if we're talking about kind of annoying um, theme songs too, I I do think the Office theme song is kind of annoying. One of my favorite shows of all time. You think but... it's annoying? Well, here's the thing, and I and this is something I wanted to bring up. You brought it up at the very intro of this episode. Nowadays, when you stream a show, almost no one will watch through the theme song. They click the skip button, right? Skip intro. And the office theme song is another instrumental, and it's just this really kind of quirky, upbeat. Boo, doo, 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 doo. I don't even know what it's played on. Is it played on one of those keyboards where you blow into the 
Oh, the, the maybe like house. a uh, maybe, maybe yeah. like, I could see that. And like it, it fits the show because the show is a comedy and it's a mostly an upbeat show. And you know, but like, man, after like hearing it like the first five times, it's just like I don't ever need to hear it. And Lindsay, because it starts off as piano, actually, it does like the little piano bit, and then the the drums kick. The drums are very aggressive in the song. Like yeah, that kick, kick drum, drum is so loud when it comes in. The whole the whole theme song is loud after that piano intro. Like I always have to like we skip it as quick as we can. Uh, well, and- I I will say this though. I mean, when you have how many seasons is there? Like nine, thirteen. Okay, okay no. nine, nine. <laughs> My first nine. guess was eight, but I was like, nah, they got more. <laughs> you know, I I feel like some shows. <laughs> The the amount of episodes you have kind of plays at the the replayability of the theme. Like for me, the full house theme, it it goes hard every time. Where I guess I could see how maybe the energy of the office theme is a little a little much at times. But I people, think the contrast is nice though. It is, but like I've seen a lot of people make like jokes online, like TikTok videos where like they um they're at someone else's house and they're like and then like they're going to sleep and they're like, Hey, do you mind if I put on some white noise? It helps me fall asleep. And then they turn and then they click on their computer. And all of a sudden you hear the, the intro theme song to the office play. Is, is this a thing? Is this yeah. like a common take that the office theme is not hidden? It's just like, like, and I've also seen people's real take reactions where they actually list, like they watch slash listen to the office to go to sleep. And when that, when it goes from one episode to the other, after the cold open, and the theme song hits, it's like annoying because people are like, I'm just like falling asleep. And then all of a sudden I'm waking up by the theme song to the office where it's like, it's like a little much, but I don't think, I don't think it's a bad theme song or a song in general, but it's not, does not have that replay factor for me that some of these other songs do. I will say two fun little, fun little backstory of mine. Uh, I actually uh, am a friend with someone that actually is a friend with Jay Ferguson, the composer for the Office theme song. Oh, yeah. Yes. So he has a solo career, Jay Ferguson, and he was in the band Spirit. And he was also in the band Jojo Gun in like the 70s. And that was actually the band that my friend did live sound engineering for. So he was very kind and he... uh, you know, set up a phone call between him and I, you know, the three of us. And I got to ask him questions about music. And, you know, I found out that he first got into doing scores for like shows and movies when he was offered to do the soundtrack for, I think, the second Terminator movie. And he had said that he said yes right away, but he didn't know how to do it at all. He just said yes to the opportunity. And now that's how he, you know, that's his career now. And Jay, if you're listening to this, I, I'm not trying to put down the office theme song. I think it fits the show perfectly. And I just we re- rewatched the show so many times uh, that we it just at some point you, you just got to skip the theme song every now and again. So I mean, I skip the psych one now almost every time. I the first couple times I let it play through, and now I skip it. Only the only times I won't is when it's the special episode. Um, I, I'm just to wrap it up, I think we got to mention. Devo did the theme song to the Rugrats classic. Um, and then speaking of classic, um, I lumped together both Curb Your Enthusiasm and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I thought you said Kirby. No. <laughs> Curb Your Enthusiasm and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They both, both shows, they're very raunchy shows, like very vulgar. And yet the theme, the theme music is like classical music. So it's kind of really? like the opposite, yeah, of, of what the actual content of the show is about. I've never seen either of those shows, and I know those are supposed to you be you should like, curb iconic. I I haven't watched like the last three or four seasons of Curb. It actually just finally ended um, earlier this year. But is that um, the one with Larry David? Yeah, yeah. It's like basically yeah. Seinfeld, like in real life. Like it's you know because IRL. Yeah, because like the character of George and Seinfeld is based off his true life. Like not oh. based off it's like, but it, like his mannerisms and stuff are very similar. Um, and then it's always sunny. I have only watched like maybe half of the, I've only watched like maybe five or six seasons. And that's a Danny DeVito one, right? Yeah. But he's, he, he wasn't in the first couple seasons. He was like a character they added later on. Oh, interesting. And now he's in all the memes. Oh, yeah, I mean he's in every episode now, and he's yeah he's one of the main characters. So, um, and then last shout out for me, um, the Dexter theme song is very cool. 
uh, and it fits the music. Uh, it fits the vibe of the show, which I don't know if you've seen. It's about a serial killer, but he kills like bad people, and he works. So as... he's a bounty hunter. No, because he actually his day job is he does um what is it like blood. Um, he works at a police station and he does the blood, like the um forensic. Yeah, but it's, yeah, forensics. But he's he does okay. the blood specifically, the okay. blood splatterings and stuff at the crime scenes. Okay. Um, but he's a serial killer, and he but he only kills people that he can like he thinks deserves it. Uh, and the the theme song like kind of fits the creepy vibe of the credits because like the opening like. Shows like blood dripping and like he's getting he, it's like him waking up and getting ready for like work, but every now and then they th- they throw in like rotting fruit or like blood and it, it just kind of fits the vibe of the, the show and then the music fits the vibe of like the opening credits. So good show, terrible last season, but um, a lot of these shows, I think almost every show we've mentioned had a like couple bad seasons near the end. Um, oh, my last shout out, just because Lindsay wanted me to shout it out. Neither of us have seen Succession, but she's heard the theme song to Succession, and she loves it. So I, had a, I have no idea what that is. It's a show on HBO. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't. It's one. It won like almost every award it was nominated for over the last couple of years. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we could be going on and on. I mean, Tony and I were talking about a ton of like Nickelodeon and Disney Channel um show animated shows with theme songs like Danny Phantom and um Fairly Odd Parents or even like the Disney Channel ones like um That's So Raven or Kim Possible. And I'm sure there was some good the Cartoon Network ones don't stick in my brain for some reason. Like Courage, I can't remember how that goes or Ed, the Ed Courage and Eddie. a Cowardly Dog show. They live in oh, the yeah. middle of nowhere. No, where's like the broadcast announcer? Okay, I kind of remember now that you're saying I remember. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, Ed, Ed, and Eddie had all the whistling, and then they would just say Ed, Ed, oh, and Eddie. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, maybe the themes theme songs weren't their strong suit. And yeah. Maybe the shows too. I don't know. No, I mean like Courage is a top tier. Yeah, I I do like Courage. I don't know why. When I think of Cartoon Network, for some reason, one of the first shows that still goes through my mind is my gym partner is a monkey or something like that i do remember that one i don't remember how that show goes but i don't know why that just rubs me the wrong way i remember one that like the sh- it was an animated one and it was supposed to be like it, it like the time period was supposed to be i think like the late 70s and it was called whatever happened to robot jones <laughs> what yeah i don't know that's so- okay okay well so the real people out there watching this who know that show you're a real one for that and please let us know what happened to him yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's a lot that we could cover, and we, maybe we'll do a part two of this, and we we'll we'll pick some more because there's, there's I mean there's so many different shows and different types. I mean we focus a lot on either animated shows or sitcoms, you know, comedies. Oh, but... I, I I want to throw out one more. Okay. The regular show theme. It is like literally oh, three no seconds idea. long. It's just one up boom with like this fat little bass thing going. And yeah, it's snappy and it gets you right in the mood for the show. I mean, I mean, if it's that snappy, I guess it doesn't really like put you in the mood. It just is the mood. That sounds like it would be just from the way you described it. It sounds like if you were to download your local news um, stations app on your phone and turn on notifications, <laughs> that's that's the sound that it would make. Like if Dad downloaded like like you know um, channel Fox thirteen, and then like. It had sound notifications. That's the sound it would make. Well, oh, okay. Think about like Netflix when you open Netflix and just the boom, yeah. boom, boom thing. Or it's, Peacock, it's basically Peacock like has that. One too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to regular show for being a super super quick intro that works. Well, and I a mean, good show. I, I think that wraps up this episode. Um, like I said, we'll we'll talk about more in the future. Um, and we definitely we're gonna we're down the road. Maybe when we get some experts, we're gonna do like. Um, video game soundtracks and like movie soundtracks too um, as well. So those those will be for future episodes, but um, let us know in the comments what your favorite TV theme, theme show songs are. And you're about to hear me doing a cover of the Psych theme song. So stick, stick around for that. 
And I'm not quite sure what we're doing the next couple of weeks. Um, Tony and I are prepping for album for albums. Yeah, good um, as always. Did we ever spill the beans on what those those picks let's, are? Let's do it now because I, I have a feeling we're going to be doing your album next week. So um, I am giving Tony Tom Petty's second solo album, Wildflowers, produced by Rick Rubin, came out in the 90s. And Tony? I am giving you – God, I'm trying to find the year. I think I know the year. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't I, even I know the year for Wildflowers. I just – I know it's the 90s. I was trying to Google it, but Hot Daddy and the Monkey Puppets were in the way of my, my screen. Steely Dan's debut record, Can't Buy a Thrill. I'm going to embarrass myself. Is it 76? Let me see. I want I want the thrill. How hard is it to Google something? 72, I was way off. Look at that, exposed. Uh, All right. You're not, you're not a true fan. I'm not a true fan. Uh, so listen to best. those albums if you have not, um, because those are going to be the probably our next two episodes. Um, so stay tuned for those. And until then, we hope you take care, and you'll be hearing from us soon. Bye-bye. In between the lines is the light of obscurity. I'm not inclined to resign to maturity If it's alright, then you're all wrong Why bounce around to the same damn song? Rather run when you can't grow I know, you know, that I'm not telling the truth I know, you know, that they don't have any clue It's a deception Worst inhibitions gonna psych you out in the end.